G'day guys, and welcome to our lesson on orbits. Orbits incorporates both circular motion and gravity. Let's talk about the circular motion part first. We make a few assumptions with orbits in physics. Number one is that the satellite, or whatever is in the orbit, here we'll talk about the satellite, is moving in a perfect circle around whatever mass it's orbiting. Here it's the Earth. So if it's moving in a perfect circle and we also assume it has a constant velocity, then it must obey the circular motion formula, which is given by either mv squared on r, or I'll jot this one down, so you remember it, 4 pi squared r m on t squared, but we'll use mv squared on r for now. So that's the circular motion component. It's moving at a constant velocity in a perfect circle, and it obeys this formula. Now the gravity aspect. Since we're talking about orbits, we know that gravity must be acting. This isn't a game of totem tennis, or a bike ride in a velodrome, or uh, what are the other examples? The roulette wheel. This is a satellite in orbit, and it relies on gravity to keep it in orbit. So the gravity force is given by Fg is equal to gmm on r squared. And it acts from the center, oh, it acts uh, on the center of this object towards the center of this object. Also the opposite, but we're not going to focus on that one. So here is the gravity force. And it's proportional to the mass of this object times the mass of this object over r squared, where r is that distance there, but I don't want to crowd it, so I'll put r down here. There we go. Now, a few things should become apparent. With circular motion, we wanted a force pointing towards the center of this circle here, the circle it's tracing. With gravity, we actually got that force. So the force needed to keep this satellite moving in that circle is provided by gravity. Therefore, we can say that the centripetal force, mv squared on r, has to equal the gravity force. And this enables us to solve all types of questions. Let's solve one now. If I have a satellite of mass 500 kilograms, moving at a radius of 12,000 kilometers around the Earth, which, which has a mass 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, what is the velocity that this satellite is moving at? So let's pop in, first of all, the radius in meters. It's very dangerous to keep things in non-standard units. So 12 million meters. We know that this satellite here, without knowing the velocity, if we know the mass of the satellite, the mass of the Earth, and the radius, we can figure out this Fg force. Let's figure that out. Fg is equal to big G, sorry, I always forget, big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. That never changes, that's on the cheat sheet. Multiplied by big M over here, by little m over r squared, which comes to 6.67 times 10 to the 11, negative 11, multiplied by 5.97 times 10 to the 24, multiplied by 500, all over 12,000 times 10 to the 3 squared. I have this comes to 1.38 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So that is the gravity force here. Fg equals 1.38 times 10 to the 3. Now provided this satellite has no other force acting on it, this gravity force must, al must also be the centripetal force. So we say 1.38 times 10 to the 3 must equal mv squared on r. Therefore, 
1.38 times 10 to the 3 times R divided by M is equal to V squared and this comes to I have um, where is this? V actually I'll write it in full V equals the square root of 1.38 times 10 to the 3 times 12 million over 500 V comes to 5.76 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. So that is the velocity that this satellite must be moving in order to main maintain that perfect circle. If it moved too slowly, if it was stationary, it would fall straight towards the Earth. If it didn't quite move fast enough, it would fall towards the Earth like this. If it were in the perfect velocity which we've calculated, it would move in that perfect circle. And if it was going too fast, it would curve out like that into space. If we don't put in our knowns, if we don't substitute these uh, symbols for knowns, we can show something very cool about our formulae. So I'll delete this and we'll work solely in algebra until the final step. Okay. So we said at the start the centripetal force has to be provided by the gravitational force. Therefore, oops, G M M on R squared is equal to M V squared on R. And this is what we're trying to find, V. Multiply both sides by R. G M M on R equals M V squared. Divide both sides by M. G M on R equals V squared. Take the square root of both sides. G M on R square root equals V. And now we can sub in the values to see if we get the same V value. Because this is the same problem we just solved. But we didn't have to muck around using M. We can just skip straight to the final step. The square root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 multiplied by 5.97, that's big M, times 10 to the 24 all over R which is 12,000 times 10 to the 3 comes to 5.76 times 10 to the 3 meters per second which is the same answer we had here but as long as this part is right, the chance that we use our calculator incorrectly, I'd say is a little lower if we're just doing one step here, provided you know how to use your brackets properly. So what this formula also tells us is that if I want to find the velocity of a satellite at a particular radius to the Earth, all I've got to do is plug in the given radius there, and I'll only get out one velocity. Well, in actual fact, that's I could get out a few velocities, but in 2D space, one, we'll say one speed, one speed. I'll only get out one speed because the satellite could be moving in this direction or this direction or even in that circle around there. Different velocities, different directions, but one speed. So in this movie Gravity, there's this dangerous debris that keeps intercepting Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. And the debris is traveling a lot faster than they are if it's coming around to intercept them. But that doesn't quite make sense because if that debris intercepted them more than once, it would mean that debris was also moving in that same orbit. And that debris would have a different velocity to them, even though it was e existing at the same radius. So for any given radius, there's only one speed at which something in orbit can move. So the most important things to remember about gravity is that the gravity force has to be equal to the centripetal force and that if you know the velocity, you can figure out the radius. And if you know the radius, you can figure out the velocity. 
I didn't incorporate the second centripetal motion formula, 4 pi squared rm on t squared, but that is also equal to the gravitational force. That'll be covered in a few example question videos.